In this video, I'm gonna give you four simple steps to tripling your income as a woodworker within the next six months. Let's dive in. All right, well, as always, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so grateful for your time and your attention. Be sure to check out the Handmade Business Secrets podcast wherever you listen to podcasts if you're watching this on YouTube and vice versa. If you want to see things from a maybe different perspective, if you've been listening to this on the podcast, be sure to check out the YouTube channel. Four steps that you can take to tripling your income as a woodworker within the next six months. The number one thing that I see a lot of people doing wrong inside of our industry, inside of the woodworking industry, is just picking the wrong products to sell. Well, what I mean specifically is that most people think that it's easier to sell less expensive products and it's easier to find lots of people to buy them. Well, the reality is, is that the hardest thing to do in business is to get a lot of people to buy something. That's the hardest thing to do. So I would rather always pick a more expensive product and not have to get a hundred or a thousand people to buy it, but only have to get a handful of people to buy it every month. Let's say that you sell cutting boards and you sell them for a hundred dollars a piece. You're trying to make $10,000 a month. Well, you have to sell a hundred cutting boards in order to make $10,000 a month. Let's say that you're selling dining table sets for $2,500. You only have to sell four people to hit that same $10,000 a month mark. So you have four invoices, four contacts, four sets of products, and you're done to hit your $10,000 per month mark as opposed to 100 people, 100 communications, 100 invoices, and 100 different unique products and 100 different opportunities to screw something up or get something wrong. So I always like to start by picking the right products with the right type of profit margins that can get me to my financial goal. So if you want to make a lot of money, you need to sell more expensive stuff than what you're currently selling. Make that a priority. Number two is to just simply get in front of more people. Now, a lot of you guys may be like, oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But you're not doing it. So you need to have organic strategies and you also need to have paid strategies to getting in front of people. So organic strategies are things that just take your time and don't take any money. Paid strategies take a little bit of time, but the money does a lot of the work for you. What do I mean by that? So organic strategies are like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, posting in local Facebook groups, things that just take time to do. Paid strategies are paid ads, running paid advertisements. And so what's cool about paid ads is that it's highly scalable. And so what you can do is once you set up a campaign, what determines its effectiveness from that point is your budget. It's how much money do you want to spend once you know that you have an effective campaign. And so if you don't know how to do this, you don't know anything about this, be sure to check me out. Click the third link below to apply for the Woodworking Business Accelerator program where I'm going to actually run your ads for you and help bring leads to your business. But the second thing is that you got to get in front of more people simply. A lot of you guys, I talk to woodworkers almost on a daily basis. And what I find is that most woodworkers only give out three to five quotes, maybe 10 quotes a month. They just don't have enough volume inside of their business of conversations to actually drive any substantial results. So you need to be giving out 30 to 50 to 100 to 150 quotes a month in order to really drive some substantial results inside of your business. The third thing that you need to do in order to triple your income in the next six months is really solidify your brand. A lot of people build a brand that's just thrown together. You know, you'll take your last name and say Vought Woodworks. There's not a lot of thought process that goes into it. The logo, you know, you created the logo and paint on your 1998 Microsoft computer, right? The feel and the look of the photography and the videos is nothing special, right? So the way to really build a brand is to really focus on how to become world-class in each of these elements of my brand. So a world-class logo, a world-class name, creating what we call a branding packet where you only use certain types of fonts and colors inside of your posts and things that you do. When it comes to your videos and your photos, getting a great camera, using a good camera, trying to take your photos and your videos in the best location that you can, when you can. Those are all key elements of building and solidifying your brand. So a couple things to focus on here. So reviews, getting more reviews on your social pages, building a website, having a legitimate website that's easy to work with, easy to find stuff. And another area that I see woodworkers go wrong when it comes to website is that a lot of woodworkers will just throw their stuff up on a website, say, hey, this is everything that I do. Fill out this form if you want something custom. People don't tend to use that or utilize that or buy on those sites at all. So you really want to have an e-commerce style website to where if they wanted to check out with a product, they could. So you say, this is our Harrison table. These are all the different links that we offer. These are all the different widths that we offer. These are the colors that we offer and the wood options that we offer. And if they can select them, it'll spit out a price and they can add it to the cart and they can actually purchase on the site. That's going to be a much better option for you on a platform like Shopify 
Shopify. They are probably the greatest e-commerce website platform out there. So reviews, website, strong logo, a strong branding packet, um, your communication style. So this is another thing that's really important when it comes to brand is, is what you're saying resonating with your audience. If you're just saying, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, it doesn't resonate as much as it does when you start really creating and crafting your language. So one of the things that we do here at Iron by Iron, we build custom furniture, custom dining tables. We found every great quote about families and dining tables that there was, and we integrate that into a lot of our social media content. We integrate that into how we communicate on our pamphlets and our cards and the things that we hand to people. And so it's really important that your language aligns not with you as much as it does with your target audience. You want your language to resonate with the audience that you're selling to. And so another way to solidify your brand, we talked about images and videos, but the last one just to kind of go over here is your pricing model. If you're super cheap, high class people aren't going to buy your stuff. Sometimes your stuff needs to be a certain price in order to attract higher class buyers. Sometimes it needs to be expensive. So I think sometimes we're really concerned about increasing our prices. We're afraid no one's going to buy. But if you build a really good brand that's beautiful and aesthetic and has a good feel and look to it, then you have really cheap prices. It doesn't really go together. But if you can build a really beautiful brand and then also have prices that set you apart as top tier, well, your product obviously needs to also be top tier, but your prices need to reflect that. If you create confusion in the marketplace with a strong, beautiful brand and low prices, you'll have a disconnect there and you won't get the buyers that you're trying to attract. That's number three, solidify your brand. And then number four, this is the fourth step, just refining your processes, refining your data and identifying what's working and what's not working. So once you have the right product, you're getting in front of more people with it and you've really established your brand, what's going to happen, hopefully, is that you start getting a lot of sales. You start now dealing with the problems of growing a business. These are good problems. They're problems nonetheless, but they're good problems. So how do we make sure that we clearly communicate with clients? How do we make sure that we set up healthy rhythms of communication inside of our business? When we start selling more than we can currently produce, how do we hire our first employee? How do we start making this thing actually grow into a legitimate business? And so refining your processes, refining how you do what you do, once you have these things established is really what's going to allow you to triple your income in the next six months as a woodworker. We have clients right now inside of our program that are doing that very thing as we speak. We have clients like Brent Saunders down in Arkansas. In his second month, he did over $20,000 with us, coming off of doing around five to 8,000. So second month in the program has more than doubled already. We've got clients like Zach Vandalin come in doing three to 5,000 a month and is currently doing around 15,000 a month clients like Jared Breedlove in his second month inside the program or third month in the program went from doing around eight to 12,000 to he did over $30,000 this last month in November. Is it an investment? Yes, but we have story after story after story after story of clients becoming and staying successful inside of our program, scaling to 20, 30, 40, $50,000 per month with their woodworking business. So if that is you, if you are ready to scale, ready to take it to the next level, ready to triple that income that we're talking about, be sure to check out the program. There's a link to an application below that you can fill out. We can hop on a call and see if it's a good fit for you. So with that being said, love you all. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.